right, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Lloyd Liu, and I am presenting ACQ sharding protocols uh, for open blockchains. And this is the joint work with my team from National University, University of Singapore. So uh, first of all, what is blockchain? Blockchain was first introduced back in 2009 by an author with a pseudonym, uh, Shadoshi Nakamoto. And uh, you can view blockchain as a public database which has some special data structure, you know, one block after another. And uh, um, this public database is shared and maintained by all the network participants or network nodes. Um, and since the introduction, blockchain has been used in many popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So these network participants, they run something called a blockchain agreement protocol so that they can periodically agree on a new block of data so that they can append it to the uh, latest state of the blockchain. Um, so this protocol, they solve the blockchain agreement pro problem, which is run between a set of n computational nodes in the network. And um, this network, this, uh, this node, they don't have any inherent identity, uh, and there's no public key infrastructure in the network. So um, they want to agree on a block, which includes a new set of generation. Um, and there are two, impo two important pro properties that this block must, must satisfy. First, the agreement property. That means all the honest nodes must agree on the same block. And secondly, the validity property, which says all the generation included in the, in the block must satisfy some validity condition. So for example, in the, in the cryptocurrency, uh, the double spending properties uh, is, is a validity condition that every node must check. So uh, currently, all the cryptocurrencies, they have the scalability issues. So for example, Bitcoin, which is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payment system. Uh, so Bitcoin currently can process up to seven transactions per second. And similarly, Ethereum, which allows uh, people to run you know, decentralized application on the blockchain. And um, Ethereum only uh, allows you to run a limited amount of computations, and still the network is under several DOS attacks recently. So if we look at the, uh, the demand from practice, uh, we see that all the centralized payment processors like Pay PayPal, Visa, or MasterCard, they can process up to 50,000 generations per second. So there's a huge gap between you know, what these cryptocurrencies can support and what we want from practice. So the real problem here is because currently we do not have uh, any scalable blockchain protocol yet. And if we take a look at the graph between the generation rate and the size of the network, um, on one hand, we have Nakamoto Consensus Protocol, which is used in many popular cryptocurrencies. Um, so Nakamoto Consensus works well in a large network, but the problem is that it only supports a constant generation rate, uh, regardless of the size of the network, right? And many uh, recent work have proposed solutions like you know, increasing the block size or reducing the block time, but uh, these proposals are not long-term solutions. They can at most achieve you know, one order of magnitude uh, improvement in terms of scalability. Uh, on the other hand, we have other uh, Byzantine agreement protocols or BFT protocols, uh, which have been studied for decades. So, uh BFT protocols allows a set of nodes to agree on some common value. Uh, but the problem here is, you know, all the BFT protocols, they uh, require a quadratic number of messages. So, uh, the, so the performance is worsened when the network size increases. So in this work, we ask uh, if we can design any scalable protocol, we can scale up the generation rate just by, you know, introducing more nodes in the network. So our contribution in this work are twofold. First, we introduce Elastico protocol, which, is, which provides near linear computational scalability. So what computational uh, scalability means is that if we double the CPUs in the network, we can double the generation rate. Uh, Elastico can tolerate up to 25% of adversary, and uh, it is the first candidate for a secure sharding protocol in, uh, for blockchain in open networks. Um, our, our second contribution is we implemented a prototype, a prototype of Elastico and evaluated it uh, on Amazon EC2. So we run up to 1,600 nodes to confirm all the uh, scalability property of Elastico. So formally, the problem that we solve in this work is uh, we want to allow um, all the network participants to agree on uh, ON's block per every protocol run. So because each block can include, uh, can, can include the same amount of generation, so by agreeing on ON blocks, uh, we can scale up the generation rate um, as you know, the network uh, size increase. 
And we want to do it with the constraint that we do, uh, we do not you know, increase more costs per node uh, at, very, at every protocol run. So we do not consume more bandwidth, or we do not you know, uh, spend more, uh, require more computation uh, uh, costs at, at every node. Um, so we want to solve this problem with some realistic assumption. Um, first, we assume that our network is synchronous. That means there's some known bounded delay when a node sends a message to other honest nodes. And we assume that there's at most one fourth of computation power in the network is controlled by the adversary. So these assumptions are really uh, practical because, first of all, Bitcoin is relying on the same set of assumptions, and many previous work also assume, uh, assume the same um, you know, assumptions. Um, we also assume that there's a rough estimation on the, on the uh, number n of CPU nodes in the network, and all the nodes have you know, equal co computation power. So note that we do not assume uh, the following assumption. So we do not assume any PKI system in the network. We do not assume any shared random coil between all the, all the network participants. So these assumptions are very, are very impractical in open, network, in open networks. So uh, at a high level, il uh, our protocol or il il Elastico achieved the scalability by distributing the large network into different smaller committees. And each of the uh, committee, we run a less efficient protocol, uh, agreement protocol to propose a block, which includes a set, a uh, you know, separate set of different transactions. So if we have more nodes in the network, more committees are created and uh, more generation blocks are generated. Uh, so this technique is known as um, sharding and has been used in the distributed database um, with centralized operator. So um, what we are showing here is how to apply the sharding technique in the open network where um, you know, there's no centralized operator and there's no share random coil or things like that. So just to uh, introduce how sharding works, let's, uh, let, let me propose a, a showman solution uh, for our problem. So in this showman solution, just for the illustration's purpose, um, we assume two impractical assumptions that we do not make in our setting. Uh, we first assume that there's a, a known set of identities uh, and, all, um, and all the nodes join the uh, protocol simultaneously before the protocol starts. And we assume that there is a uh, common random coin. So with this assumption, the sharding, uh, pro uh, the, the sharding protocol is very straightforward. So we ask all the, no the nodes to compute the hash value of uh, their public key and the random coin uh, so that they will know which committees they belong to. So uh, after computing, computing this hash value, um, um, every node will just broadcast the hash value to everyone in the network. And uh, so that they will know, you know, who belongs to which committee, right? So after this, every committee member will run uh, a Byzantine agreement protocol so that they can produce their own data block. And uh, after all the data blocks are created, they, just, they will just broadcast all the blocks. So let's analyze the cost of this uh, showman solution. Um, so the because everyone has to broadcast their hash value to everyone in the network, so this broadcast uh, step takes O n square messages, and uh, it's not scalable in the network because n or the number of uh, nodes in the network may be as large as you know 10,000 or even 1 million, right? So um, this is not scalable. Um, the the cost for running a uh, Byzantine agreement protocol in every committee is OC square uh, if C is the size of the committee. So if we choose C is uh, small enough, so this is OK. Uh, but after producing all the data blocks, if we you know, broadcast all of them and ask every node to verify all the blocks, so this is not different than just increasing the block size in the Nakamoto consensus protocol. So this is not scalable. So in our protocol, uh, namely Elastico, we address all these uh, security and performance challenges. So basically, we ask, uh, we use proof of work to, you know, allow the nodes to establish their identities. So this is to re remove the PKI assumption, and we reduce the cost of committee assignment from O N square to only O N C. Uh, and we also generate a set of different random numbers so that we can avoid the common random coin assumption, and uh, we. Uh, propose a mechanism to reconcile the result without uh, verifying and broadcasting all the data blocks. So I will next talk in detail how we do um, all this step. 
So for step one, we uh, use proof of work to uh, allow the nodes to establish their identities. So proof of work allows um, allow us to limit the, the number of identities that a node can create to the amount of co competition that no the node has. So um, basically, the node has to search for a non-value so that the output of this hash function certify uh, the above condition. And uh, the hash function takes several inputs, one of which is the epoch randomness. So I will talk later how we generate this epoch randomness, but for now, we can just assume there exists one. And the node also put the IP and the public key into the hash function, so this is just for the communication later. And D here is just some global parameter that every node knows, uh, which determines how much work uh, a node has to do in order to establish its identity. Uh, so the output of this step is a list of you know, ID, IP, and public key of all the nodes in the network. And in step two, uh, we need to distribute these, these nodes in uh, step one into different committees. And we want to assign uh, the committee um, uniformly at random so that we can guarantee that for every committee with high probability, at most one third of the committee members are malicious. So this condition, uh, these are the conditions so that later on we can run all the practical Byzantine agreement uh, protocols. Um, so, our solution here is to use the last k bit of the, identi uh, of the ID of the nodes, uh, assuming that there are two to k committees in the network. So, for example, all the nodes with the last two bit in the ID as 00, zero we belong to the first committee, and all the nodes with the last two bit as 01, we belong to the second committee. And we stop uh, solving proof of work or establishing more identities when we know that each of the committee has at least C members. So, so how to choose C, we discuss it in the paper, uh, but for now, we just, uh, C is just some global parameter that everyone knows. But you know, knowing this condition, each committee has at least C uh, members is tricky because the naive solution is you just ask everyone to broadcast their identities. But this solution requires ON square messages and it doesn't scale in, in the open network. So our solution here is to use the directory committees. So what we, what we do is we ask uh, the first identities in the network to become the, direct, the directory servers. So these directory servers will help the network keep track of who belong to which committee. And so note that all the nodes, they don't have to uh, agree on which C members are the directory servers. So every node can have different C directory servers. Um, so the later nodes, when they establish their identities, they will send the ID to the directory servers. And once the, the directory servers see that each of the node has, uh, each of the committee has at least C members, um, they will broadcast the committee list to you know the committee members. So this process requires only O and C messages, uh, which is much less than O and square. So the detail of the process is more involved, and uh, I encourage you to take a look at our paper. Uh, but there are several security guarantees that we provide here. Uh, first, we, we guarantee that uh, all the honest nodes in the same committee, we know each other. And although they may include different malicious nodes in the, in the uh, committee view. And with high probability, at most one third of the committee members are malicious. So with these security guarantees, uh, running step three is very straightforward. So we just ask all the committee members to run a classical Byzantine agreement protocol uh, so that they can agree on the same data block. And uh, we, we will put all the signature and, uh, of the committee members in the block header, just, uh, you know, just similar to um, the block header in the Bitcoin uh, block. And now we come up with the question of how to recon reconcile all the data blocks. So in step four, we introduce the final committee um, to union all the, all the data blocks. So how we select this final committee is similar to how we select other committees. So all the nodes with the same last k bit will belong to the final committee. Uh, for example, here all the um, nodes with the last two bit as zero, zero will become to the final committee. Um, so, um, after this, all the data committees, they will just send the block header to the final committee. And sending the block header is enough because um, the final committee, they can check all the signature included in the block header, and they can be guaranteed that all the data, uh, all the generation included in the data block are valid. So they don't have to download uh, all the data blocks. 
And then the final committee, we run a Byzantine agreement protocol so that they can produce the final block. And once the final block is created, it will get broadcast to everyone in the network. Um, so you may wonder, how about the data blocks? Do we really need to uh, broadcast them? So the answer, the, the answer is it really depends on the applications. So for the, for the application, when verifying the transaction requires you know, the entire history of the blockchain, then you really have to broadcast it. So the example uh, how you know, the current cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, Ethereum, they verify the uh, double spending property. So they really have to get all the previous transactions in the network, so we cannot avoid the broadcast here. But note that if we use Elastico, um, when you receive a data block, you don't have to verify all the generation. You can just verify whether the data block is included in the final block, and you can accept all the generation, all the generation included in that data block. And, but for many applications, when uh, you know, verifying some generation is independent of the uh, existing data on the blockchain, you don't have to uh, broadcast the data blocks. So the example are the, uh, you know, some many proof of publication blockchain where you only need to prove to someone that you have submitted some data to the blockchain in the past. And we also um, propose our own uh, elastico based cryptocurrency. We can verify all the double spending uh, problem without you know, broadcasting all the, all the data blocks. So this uh, new cryptocurrency is not mentioned in the paper. So I, uh, if you are interested, we can discuss uh, after my talk. Um, so remember, in step one, we use the epoch randomness to initialize the hash function. So in step five, we need to generate this epoch randomness. And um, so we want to do it afresh so, so that we can provide the adversary from you know, controlling or predicting the, the epoch randomness so that he can pre-compute pre the hash function. Uh, so the common approach in all the you know, blockchain work is to use a uh, you know, final block hash. But it is problematic because here in Elastico, we ask the final committee to run you know, some consensus protocol to arrive at the final block. And the adversary can easily predict the final block early. So he can have some head start uh, in the next epoch. So what we observe is that you know, agreeing on a, a single random number is hard, so we gave up on this. And what we do is we allow, you know, a, we allow the node to pick different random numbers as long as all the random, number, all the random numbers are uh, unbiased and verifiably random. So what we do is we ask uh, each of the final committee to pick a random number RI, and uh, they, they will do the commit review scheme uh, when they propose the final block. So what they do is they include all the hash of RI into the final block, and, when, and then they will broadcast the uh, real value RI uh, when they broadcast the final block. And so now the nodes in the network, they can select any set of you know, 2C by 3 RI, and they can XOR all the, um, all, all the values together to get their own randomness. So as, as we can see, you know, the randomness, every randomness has bounded by us because the adversary can control only at most one third of the RI values. And if we choose the size of RI properly, then we can cancel out all the, bi all the bias. And all the, all the random numbers are verifiable um, in a way that, you know, when a node uh, send the proof of work solution to other nodes, uh, it will need to send along the information which says which RI it used to produce the randomness. So other, other nodes, they can verify if the randomness is uh, correctly constructed um, based on the, um, all the commitment in the final block. So for evaluation, uh, we uh, want to evaluate the scalability, uh, scalability property of, uh, of our protocol. So what we do is we implemented a prototype of Elastico um, on top of Bitcoin code base, and we run it on Amazon EC2. So we use up to 800 EC2 instances to run up to 1,600 nodes uh, to, uh, for in our experiments. So for the setup, uh, the committee size we choose here is 100. And why 100? Um, so we explain in the paper, it's basically because of the PBFT performance uh, in the open network. And so we run a setup experiment to see that uh, in, our, in our testing environment, C must be no uh, greater than 100. 
and we vary the network size from 100 to 1,600 so that we can produce from 1 to 16 data blocks. And um, um, so we first report the, the epoch time or the, uh, the time required to run the whole protocol with different, uh, with different uh, network size. Um, right, so the, the gray bar is, uh, indicates the time taken for the node to establish their identities and, and form uh, all the committees. So the black bar is the time uh, taken to run the consensus protocol within all the committees. Um, so we see that there's a slight, a slight increase in the uh, committee formation time. Um, we explain why in the paper, but basically it's because of the both and beans problem. Um, so because of this increase in the epoch time, uh, Elastico achieved nearly near scalability, uh, as shown in the red bar in, this, in, 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 the, uh, in the other graph. So uh, in terms of bandwidth and message consumed per node, um, we report both the number of messages and the bandwidth per node uh, in different network size. And we see that there's a slight, re reduce, a, a slight reduction as we introduce more nodes in the network. So this is purely because of how we set up our experiment. So we have one committee run as both data committee and the final committees. So if we have more committees in the network, the cost of running the final committee get distributed to all the others committee. So, uh, in conclusion, we introduced Elastico, which scale up the generation rate almost linearly to the computation power in the network. And uh, our solution is based on uh, sharding in open networks. We evaluated uh, Elastico uh, in real network by running up to 1,600 nodes. So with that, I want to conclude my presentation, and I'm happy to take questions.